Stream or purchase Be Blessed on Apple Music, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play Music, and Tidal today. Good evening and welcome to Virtual Wednesdays. I'm Minister Annette. I find it an, an honor to be standing before you this evening. Thank you for Bishop Harold Duncan for and Pastor Felicia for allowing me to come into your living rooms this evening. Tonight we're going to talk about prayer and how powerful the prayer can be. In a 24-hour cycle, we are no strangers to tragedy. One disaster strikes and another swiftly takes its place. In the headlines, and people come calmly respond uh, with the comments like, hmm, I thought prayer would work, but lately people have been questioning whether prayer is actually much help at all. We have been, we love being able to fix problems on our own power, but we often forget where our true source of power comes from, and it comes from God. Prayer is never the last resort. Prayer is our first line of defense. We don't realize the power of prayer has to change circumstances, and we often forget that sometimes the greatest power of prayer is the change of our own hearts and perspective. <clears throat> prayer reminds us that we are not in control, but that we serve a God who is in control. Prayer allows us to surrender our own worries and align our hearts with God's and practice depending on God. Prayer also changes us. It encourages us and sometimes it challenges us to be the answers to the prayers that we pray. Jesus taught a lot about prayer during his monthly ministry and even instructed us on how we can pray through what's known as the Lord's Prayer. And we're all familiar with that prayer. It goes such as this, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day is our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but lead us not into temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Uh, that's found in Matthew 6, 8 through 13. We don't need a special language for prayer. God already knows what you need. But see how prayer shapes your perspective in that prayer. It invites us to, to depend solely on God by asking him to meet our need for today. It invites us to take a part in the answer to the kingdom coming to the earth by way we live and love others. Ultimately, prayer is less about getting what we want and more about realizing who we're getting connected to. It's about surrendering control and trusting God to do the things that seems impossible to us. And God sometimes often, and it's sometimes to do often because it's such a privilege to get to talk to God, the creator of the universe. And we don't just pray for something once. Jesus instructed us to keep on praying until we get an answer. And we know that the power, that we know that the prayer of a righteous person is powerful. Yes, our prayers do matter. They move the heart of God. They have the power to change circumstances. And above that, they always change us. The, our power is limited, but God's power is limitless. So we pray, we ask God to move, to intervene, to act. And when we feel prompted to, to be an answer to a prayer by meeting a need for someone else, we take action, knowing that it is God who is at work and not us. Speaking to the God who listens. Some time ago, I was given a word that God is going to watch over me and take care of me and um, bless me with my heart's desire. After that day, two days later, my daughter had a heart attack. And then in that same week, my house was shot up. So I know the power of prayer kept us alive. My daughter is doing well and fine. She had a stamp, a stamp put in and she's doing well. My house was beat up, but no one was hurt. So I know that the power of prayer and praying and, ask, and speaking to God 
for the future things to come because our prayers that we pray for right now don't always happen for us right now, but it can speak a word into the future things to come because only God knows what's ahead of us. The God of all grace, that's what the apostle Peter called him. That that word grace in the Greek means cherish. It means favor extended. It implies a gift or blessing, a loving kindness. It's where we find our English word charity. So God is this giver of all blessings, all gifts, all loving kindness, and all favor. He is the giver of everything that is good and the one of the chief vehicles which comes through it, which comes through it. It extends all grace to us through prayer. So what is prayer? In the most basic terms possible, prayer is talking to God. It's a conversation between God and us. But as one Christian author put it, prayer for the Christian is not merely talking to God, but it's responding to the one who initiated it toward us in the first place. Yes, God speaks to us first, and it is our turn to initiate back to God with our prayers and supplications. Prayer for the, it's not merely talking to him just to get stuff, just to get things. I need a house, a car, a job. I need some money. I need this and I need that. It's actually, prayer is actually to get in communication with God, to get in communion with God. That is our other part of our worship is our prayer. It's where we commune with God when we have a conversation with God. It's like you go to your friend or your husband or your wife and you have that intimacy. That's what prayer is between you and God. It's that intimacy, getting to know who God is, not just what he can do for you. He, he speaks to us first. So we listen when he speaks to us first. He's not only just listening to us, but we need to listen for him as well. Uh, but in a, in a relationship, we draw from the presence of the God because he's not only speaking to us, but we're speaking to him and we can draw that, draw from that because his voice breaks the silence. In prayer, we're speaking to the one who has spoken to us through creation itself. Romans 1 and 20, Psalms 19, 1 through 4 speaks about the creation, how God has spoken through creation. Second, uh, the one who speaks through grace, 2 Corinthians 12 and 19, and peace, Psalms 41 and 10, and love, John 3, 16, over us. The one who has spoken the words of truth, John 6 and 68, and the life, John 10, 10, who has shown us the way, John 14 and 6. In the light of this, prayer is thus a response, a reflex to the grace that God has already given us. When we come before him in prayer, we speak to him so we can be sure that he has already spoken to us. 2 Corinthians 1.20 declares, For all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes, and through Christ our amen ascends to God for his glory. That's in the New Living Translation. Prayer is a two-way relational lifeline. A lifeline that is made available to us through the person and the work of, the, of God's Son, Jesus Christ, and in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so prayer is a conversation that God initiates. It's our response to God who hears us. He listens and accepts my prayer, Psalm 6 and 9. But when it, what is the grand purpose of prayer? God knows what I'm going to pray before I pray it. He knows my wants. He knows my needs. He knows my heart better than me. He knows my needs, my desires, my dreams, my fears. In every area of my life, he knows. So why should I pray? It's not because we need to get anything from God, but it's because we can actually get God himself. 
John Piper once wrote, it is not wrong to get God's gifts and to ask for them. Most prayers in the Bible are for the gifts of God, but ultimately every gift should be desired because it shows us and brings us more of him. Friends, in the simplest terms that I can minister, the purpose of our prayers is for us to experience more of God. In every request, in every expression, in every question, every pleading, every confession and revelation, everything we ask for or declare in prayer, the end game of the prayer is to know the deepest levels possible of the God that we serve, of the God who saves, of the God who sustains us, of the God who redeems and restores. God wants to sit, God wants to hear from you. In fact, God is ready to hear from you when you pray. Think about that. He wants to interact with you. His desires are more than just head knowledge or shadow, shadow, shallow hypocritical relationship. The God of all grace wants to fill you with his grace beyond your ability to measure. Prayer is our life cycle. Ephesians 6 and 18 says, and pray in the spirit and in all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. With lifestyle influences on nearly every social media platform, the word lifestyle carries much more weight in our society today, from travel blogs to, to health and fitness to uh, fashion channels and, and everything you could think of on social media, these lifestyles seem to encompass one's passion and purpose. In view of this today, prayer should be our lifestyle. Although today's scripture tends to be overlooked, it contains a vital message relating to the spiritual warfare Paul writes about beforehand. After urging his audience to equip themselves with the full armor of God, he implores them to pray consistently. Pray consistently. Pray consistently. Even when it doesn't look like your prayers are being answered, pray consistently. Even when you don't think God is listening, pray consistently because he is listening and he hears you. Some believe that prayer itself is just another piece of armor. As Priscilla Schreiner wrote in her Bible study, the armor of God, prayer is the mechanism that brings down the power of heaven into your experience. And it is divinely authorized method that activates your spiritual armor and make it effective. Prayer activates the full armor of God that we put on and it makes us effective. Essentially, Paul was telling his readers that prayer should be a lifestyle all in one verse. He emphasizes the four elements of a prayerful life. First, prayer involves the spirit. Praying in the spirit simply means that we pray with an attitude of submission and with a desire to remain in God's will, even when we feel weak and confused. This is the fruit of the spirit working in our hearts, according to Romans 8, 26 and 27. Two, prayer is not bound by time, situation or nature. Paul specifically calls us to a prayer on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests, which means that there is nothing too big, nothing too small, nothing too long, and nothing too short to pray about that we can bring before the Lord. He is always available to hear and to speak when you wake up as you drive, when you're in a meeting, before a meal, after your meal, in the middle of a conversation, 
at any time, at all times, in anything and in everything, with everything. These prayers can be as simple as, thank you, Lord, help me, Lord, bless me, Lord, bless them. Or as deep as getting on your knees and your hands and laying on your face and praying over them. Prayer is not reserved for meals, bedtime, or church. It should become constant and ever-present. Open dialogue with the Father. As you were living every walk, as you were living every walking, waking moment on the phone line with God, never hanging up or disconnecting the line. Third, prayer is a strategy. Paul stresses and uses prayer in so many of his letters because he knows prayer is a strategy God specifically equipped us with to combat the enemy's deceitful schemes while also drawing us close to him. In fact, God gave us some 650 prayers in the Bible to learn to follow from. Wow, imagine if you could pray 650 prayers in that year, how much closer would you be to God? Prayer and four, prayer requires intentionality. Lastly, Paul's words towards the end of the verse where he says, with this mind, be alert. Always keep on praying compels us to keep the truth about prayer's importance. The power at the forefront of our minds is so that we can make prayer a conscious decision and effectually a healthy habit. Therefore, we may strive to live a lifestyle of prayer because we only acknowledge prayer as power, understand its necessity, and value it as a gift from our gracious Father that we will be able to draw closer to him and truly live our God-given person. Thank you, Father, for being able to pray to you. Thank you, Father, for listening to us. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you, O oh God, that you abide in our presence, O oh God, where we don't have to go anywhere else but into the throne room of grace to pray unto you. Thank you, Father, for that opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. This concludes my worship on prayer. We also have another way of worshiping here at The Life, which is uh, our giving. And we can give those funds by coming on, doing Givelify online, which is a wonderful app to have on your phone. And anytime you want to give a little or a lot, you can use Givelify. If you feel uncomfortable with the electronics, you can always come down to the office Tuesday through Friday, and, we, and our office staff will be gladly to take your um, offering and your uh, tithes. Also, you can mail it in to the, uh, to the church at 25210 Grand River in Redford, Michigan. We thank you and have a good night.